Good afternoon and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting March 6, 2019 at 4.08 the afternoon at, here at the Deerfield Municipal Offices. Uh, the first thing on our agenda tonight is we're going to have a public information session on the Board of Health proposed vaping re regulations. And tonight with us, or this afternoon with us, is Attorney D.J. Wilson, the Tobacco Control Director from the Mass Municipal Association. Welcome. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yes. Really appreciate it. Sure. So, would you like me to give you a rundown of what's been happening the last few months? Yes. Please. I yes, certainly please. would. Please. Uh, so, I should back up and say that uh, um, back in July, the governor signed an updated an update to uh, the to, uh, no tobacco sales to kids and to our smoke free workplace law at the state level. And um, that's been going well. Uh, we now have 235 cities and towns, including Deerfield, at age 21. And, and, and Deerfield has done you know, almost all of the, uh, you have almost all the policies in your local regulation. Around November, though, we started seeing, uh, we have known for a while that Juul is, has, been a, uh, has been very popular with, as a type of e-cigarette and has been very popular with high school students. And our concerns are that they, uh, it doesn't look like it. E-cigarette, I can show you one if you haven't seen one. I'd love to see them, yep. And uh, they don't look like a regular, uh, they don't look like a c cigarette. They, they're easy to disguise. A lot of kids put them in their socks. Uh, they they uh, have a very strong nicotine solution that uh, uh, when used goes to your brain faster, so there's a faster response. And Jewel themselves say that the pod, which is tiny, um, uh, is the equivalent of one pack of, a ci of cigarettes. Wow. So, uh, and so we've been, so starting in November, we started hearing from the FDA commissioner who unfortunately just tendered his resignation this, uh, in the last 24 hours. Um, the Surgeon General and CDC have all come out and said this is really an epidemic. From that, uh, while we were getting ready in tobacco control to get ready for the updates to the state laws, um, we started seeing a lot of local uh, officials uh, being becoming concerned because either they, you've seen it all on national news or that you've been in touch with your superintendent or school po or your school principals. Mm -hmm. So this is a jewel. Um, this is the pod. This is how they come. The f I'll give it to you in a second, but the, the green indicates that's menthol. Mm -hmm. The pod, this is the pod that has the equivalent of one pack of cigarettes. They currently, I, they, they originally only had one strength. I think they're going to have two different strengths. And then this is how you, uh, how you uh, zoom up the recharge the battery? That's a USB. Here. Yeah. So what well, we've also learned too from uh, from anecdotally, we've heard from a lot of uh, uh, school librarians that kids will check out the laptop that's provided at the library, either the public library or the high school library, solely for the purpose of re uh, recharging Charging. Their, their jewels. Hmm. Thank you. And then um, you can get, um, you know, Juul by the feds have been really clamping down on them, so they've tightened their website as to how kids can get on the website. But these still are available at convenience stores. A, a starter kit with the th um, can go for as low as twenty dollars if it's on sale. And how does it work? Oh, uh, so you would, uh, you would just... take off that, yep, and then you uh, breathe into the end with the pod. You would breathe yep. into it. Yeah, and it changes. It turns the liquid into a vapor. Just by doing that. Yep. So you know, so it is. It's one of these things that you can. Unlike a cigarette smoker, the two big differences is that you can take one hit. You know, and this is why we see kids in class. At first, they was, we thought it was just to get away with something in classroom. Teacher turns their back. They take a hit from their jewel, and this has far less smoke or whatever smoke there is. Breathe it up your sleeve. But now we're getting to the point that these kids are highly addicted, so they actually can't get through a day of school without re-upping this. Because the other problem that we have learned is that we all know cigarette smokers, and cigarette smokers you know, define their usage by how many sticks they use a day, right? Right. It's, I only smoke three a day, half right. a pack, I'm a pack a day. Yeah. Um, and with this, you can actually just kind of keep on inhaling keep your nicotine uh, levels high, and you can actually become more addicted through this because it's not right. that same. So you can keep it here. I met a, uh, at a baby shower, met a gentleman who was like an 80-year-old uncle to the 
great uncle to the, yep. up, uh, uh, the upcoming baby and had it around, on a gold chain around his neck. Yep. And so we just did that all day. So you're actually getting yourself more nicotine than not. So obviously there's the benefit, so I've heard some benefits to this for smokers is that it gets them off of cigarettes without the carcinogens Right, so of, it gets rid of the tar. Right. It still has problems with um, some metals. Uh, right, I've uh, heard that. Blister Heavy off metals, yep. Because of the high temperature. The solutions aren't checked, but you are correct. The tar that's found in cigarettes is missing. So, like, you know, I've had a couple people talk to me. I'm a smoker. I'm going to switch to this, and I want to eventually go off of it. What do you recommend? Right. And my recommendation is don't pick your favorite flavor. Yeah. If your Boston cream pie is your favorite flavor in the world, don't do a Boston cream pie right, vape because you'll do it the rest of your life. Every, every <laughs> no. flavor under the right. sun. I mean, we all would do this, right? right. If I had a pocket full of, of M&Ms all day, yes. I would not stop. <laughs> so, right. Uh, so, uh, so, so that's one of the problems. Is the fl without the flavors, it's very boring to do this. Right. So that's one of the issues. So starting around November... Uh, I, I do. Oh, no, no. I just, this is what was so appalling to me when I started looking into this. I started seeing kids with this stuff, and I, I didn't identify it at first. Yeah. You know, I didn't really under, I said, you know, because I'm not really technology no, no, it looks savvy. Like so. so I thought it was something to do with the computer. computer. <laughs> and so when I asked, and then I was appalled that there were so many kids with this stuff. Yeah. And then um, when I did some research and found out that a whole pack of cigarettes yep. worth of nicotine is in one of these pods, right. I, I just really, I mean, we really need to do something about this. How and fast think of that, 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 what's in your right hand, that goes for about $20. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper than cigarettes. It's che a pack of Marlboro is about $10, yes. so it's yes. cheaper. I so know, how that's long does a, pad, a, a pod last? It's hard to know because, again, you could, have someone say, you could have someone say to yourself, I keep it, you know, I, I, I don't keep it on me all the time. So I have about 10 drags a day. But then you could have a 14-year-old who's like, oh, I do two, two pods a day. Like, <laughs> and they're excited by this. Right. So it's hard to know. One of the things that keeps you down, that the reason that we don't see two or three pack a day smokers anymore is the cost, the sheer cost, yes, right? Right. Um, but, and, and you're able to um, figure out how much you're smoking by those number of sticks, right. whereas this, it's, very, it's much more difficult. Yeah. So getting back to the policy, um, okay. but I certainly can entertain any yep. questions about the product. And, and that's just one product. So blue is another product. Yeah. It's now morphed into something that looks close to this. And we'll always be behind the eight ball on tobacco control. They are right now, you know, testing, test marketing new stuff that we don't know about. So, but well, one of the things that we've been able to enjoy in Massachusetts is that the city of Providence passed an ordinance that took, uh, took the 2009 federal prohibition on flavored cigarettes with the exemption from mint, menthol, and wintergreen. And they made an ordinance and they expanded that to all these e-cigarettes and all other types of traditional tobacco, not just cigarettes. And they got sued immediately in federal court. But Providence prevailed at the Federal Court of Appeals. The tobacco industry did not appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. And because we share the same federal court district as Rhode Island, it was a big green light for us. But since November, now that, you know, Scott Gottlieb at the FDA was talking about the problems with menthol, the problems with e-cigarettes, uh, that's when we started having a few towns, uh, notably... Uh, the three that have passed to this date are Somerville, Ashland, and Needham. They all took in that, there's a complex set of definitions that we stick close to because that's what Providence did, but they took mint, menthol, and wintergreen from the exempted part of the definition for characterizing flavor and moved it to the laundry list of what is a flavor. So all three have done that. Um, Ashland's will go into effect at the, end of the, at the start of the new year, Needham, July 1, and, uh, but uh, Somerville goes into effect April 1. And you'll see on my handout with you, hopefully I did this right, I gave you all the extra handouts in case you need them or something. So you'll, you'll see that uh, the, the top is, is what Somerville did, because they did, they, number one is what those three, all three towns have done. But number two, they've also limited the e-cigarette sales to those qualifying retail tobacco stores or vape shops in town. That was that section G. 
yet. I, that's what I wanted to ask you for. It says no person shall shall sell or dis distribute or cause to be sold or distributed any flavored tobacco product except in smoking bars and retail tobacco stores. Yeah. Now, is that Where's, what are they getting sued on? They're getting sued on all three things here. All Although three. they're getting okay. sued on the number one is moving that menthol mint wintergreen okay. from exempted to unexempted. Okay. The second, the second thing they're getting sued on is saying all e-cigarettes, Juul, any brand, and all the liquids have to be sold at those specialty shops so as well. Specialty. They're coming so at that, us. That, oh, so they are going after them for that. Yeah. And then number three, which is really a, a minor thing, but it's what caused Somerville to start looking at this, was to, uh, to consider that for those e-cigarette juices, so when a pod sold by Juul is called tobacco, Somerville said, that's really a flavor, because these aren't natural. You know, uh, right. There's natural Nothing tobacco natural being grown down the street from here, but in order to make a pod tobacco flavored, you have to make it, you have to manufacture that, just like you do anything else. So it's really number one and two that are the practical things that go into effect. And I should say, so this would utilize the same classification, what's a retail tobacco store or qualifying vape shop, as we do with our standard tobacco uh, flavored policy. So that doesn't change. So they still need to be adult only, which means only laying kids who are 21 or old, people of 21 or older in. And that the sale of all other things are incidental. So it's, you know, like an old timey tobacconist that you think of. And then a lot of vape shops are really just vape. And we're trying to make that bright line as possible between what a convenience store is and what a vape shop is. Because when you start bleeding the two together, then it becomes much more difficult, legally and practical, to say what is and what isn't. So in the end, you know, a handful of uh, convenience stores in Somerville were approached, I'm sure they were approached, to be part of a lawsuit on behalf of the industry for this. Because they will lose under this, under this dual thing they will only be able to sell, a convenience store selling April 1st will only have tobacco flavored cigarettes, tobacco flavored chew and spit, tobacco flavored cigars and cigarellos, and they technically could have unflavored e-cigarettes, but really no one would ever use them. So it is taking product out of those and putting them back into a specialty shop that we, in, that city and town officials and our tobacco control programs can keep a really close eye on that small group. Uh, so I live in Malden right now, so Malden has entertained just number two. Our Board of Health will be that I'm on will be uh, deciding in, uh, in two weeks whether or not to do number two. Are they? So just, just let me just finish this thought, just sure. so you know, get an idea. Yeah. We're 62,000 people, about 58 uh, retailers, and this will leave about six places that will be able to sell. We have no um, tobacco-only places. But you may get somebody who right. either opens up or morphs their current business to be one. That's my question, is that by doing this, you're, you're driving a lot of business to one specific or two specific places, and it makes it very lucrative for those areas, and you're denying e-commerce to, to anybody, to all the other people. I would, you know, for me, I'd rather none at all. But, right. but um, yeah. I just, I'm just nervous yeah. about... about uh, regulating favorites in the marketplace. Well, so I should say over and one step further, we do have some towns that are putting in place a cap mm -hmm. on the number of permits and a dual cap saying, for example, Burlington, um, Braintree. We have 30, we'll give out 30 tobacco sales permits a year. Of that 30, there shall be no more than four that will be retail tobacco stores or vape shops. We are careful, I am careful to say to them, don't do just one to make a monopoly. Don't right. even do just do, do two. Right. Um, be, and let the market decide how many you'll get because you won't, I mean, it's unusual that Malden even has five vape shops. It, I, I suspect, you know, it's just, it's a lot. Right. But again, what we do, while they may get this monopoly of six in Malden that have the, these retail tobacco store status, we have been very careful to make sure that the other 52 convenience stores can't complain that they're gonna lose those customers who would normally come in and buy the newspaper, milk, bread, coffee. Because under our definition, you can't have those. 
we've tried to make that as separate as possible. In reality, if you could in a town, you could make a va you, if you wanted if you were in a town that had you know these two things, or in Somerville, you could have a tiny store the size of this space right here and just sell tobacco and vape products, and that would be that. But you're not interrupting the commerce for the 7-Eleven down the street because you're not carrying the same things. Can you license those shops differently? Yeah, we we, do. we we've been we are, we have been sticking close to this because it also is part of that. So the only thing that's uh, being sued on that veers from that Providence ordinance is the mint menthol mint wintergreen move. But, so it's trying to stick close to it because it is actually uh, Providence did a good job of making a very as clean a line as possible to make sure that we didn't end up with convenience stores that had a curtain in the corner and on the other side had all kinds of. No, I guess what I was asking stuff. is that. You know, Permit. now we have tobacco licenses and they sell cigarettes, but this is not tobacco. It's, you know, nicotine. We and lump it together and so does the new state law, by the way. It does. So we can't, you can't have a special license for selling a nicotine only product. No, and we, well, we, we veer away from that too because we, because this is a really unrela unregulated world. And in fact, you know, per, Jewel is probably one of the ones that you could trust more as to what's in it. Um, when something says zero nicotine, we don't trust that either. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so who's going to decide that something has has or doesn't have nicotine in it? It's the best way that we have been able to cut the difference between the two. And for those who've been around a long time, remember you may remember the arguments about smoking in restaurants with yes. liquor license, without liquor license, with bar areas, yeah. without ventilation. <laughs> so we're trying to we are trying to be as clean about this as possible, and we still give the option for a. A business to say, well, I'm going to change my business model. The one place that really gets knocked out cleanly in this kind of uh, number two option is liquor stores, because liquor is not incidental, so they cannot become a um, retail tobacco store. How about the a multi pack? One of the advantages of this is it's cheaper than cigarettes. So, um, how about that section in section eight where it talks? Um, Number three there. Do you have different things than I have? No, I have the I'm trying to get Yeah, I don't, I don't have the sum of stuff. Right. Oh, sure. it says sell a tobacco oh. product as defined here and to consumers through oh. any multi-pack discounts. So I'm wondering, is it how how that has stood up, um, where you had you couldn't sell singles, like you're not not allowed to sell cigarette right. uh, uh, cigars singly and stuff like that. And that's actually uh, you know um, some of that's the second. Shoe to fall on the, on the Providence ordinance was that uh, Providence also prevailed in saying no redemption of coupons and no two for one. The world of cigarettes is just much more uniformly packaged. Ninety nine percent of them are twenty packs. One percent is twenty five packs from Europe, but the rest we've you know we don't see kitty packs anymore of five. This stuff is all over the place. You can buy vats of juice to make on your own at home down to little tiny things. You, if you, I don't know if you've seen, mods are big. They're the size of a I, big iPhone. You know, holds lots of juice, liquid juice, as well as battery juice. So some people like those. But, and some are smaller than even these to be hidden. So the product line is all over the place, and it really is a uh, endless whack-a-mole game to try to figure out how you would stand it. And I'll tell you where we're playing around with that. Um, our lob lobbyists for American Heart, Cancer, and Lung are trying to figure out how you tax these things. Because do you tax them on the milliliter in each one? How, do you tax it on the weight of the product? Do you go after the hardware and the juices? So it's very hard to do. Whereas for cigarettes, it's like you're on a list from the Department of Revenue. All the brands are right there. They're all 20 packs, 351 a pack. Easy to do. Very hard to play around with this. We also get into some interstate commerce problems when we start fooling around with the product itself and the packaging and the advertising and the warranty warnings. That's a that's a First Amendment problem. So so uh, so that's where we're at. So I should say one a couple other things. We probably do have a handful of, of other cities and towns deciding to do number one or number two, um, or both. And uh, the ta little the tiny town of Dover Monday night did ban the sale of e-cigarettes completely and the sale of flavored products, including menthol, 
completely. They only have two retailers, though. So. Yeah, we have six. six. So. Um, so. One of the things that came along with the cigarette, um, pr um, the whole cigarette process, you know, of eliminating in public spaces and restaurants and stuff was huge educational packet. And, and we were able to get information out. Just anecdotally, I don't think a lot of families are talking about this with their kids, the dangers. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of community buzz on how awful these things are and how addictive they are. And it's a gateway to, I mean, it's just as addictive as heroin and cocaine yeah. and, it, and, you know, it's all this stuff. So how, um, is there anything that we can access for a public education process as well? I mean, part of my reasoning to want to do this was so that we would cause some community buzz and controversy in the community and say, oh, wow, we're, sick. we're coming right. out as the Board of Health and saying that this is bad and that you need to tell your kids it's bad and that right. there's some authority saying you don't want to do this because no one's it just appears to me that there's not a lot of conversation happening that this shouldn't be you shouldn't be doing this kids right. so i'll tell you what we have been doing uh um you're not a funded community with a board of health program who does the the inspections i don't believe no we do it ourselves right. we have um our resource officer okay. do it with the kids so that's great so yes. the re your enforcement is done that's usually the, the the sticking point for unfunded towns to move forward but the state is divided into seven regions, and Melinda Calianos is your region's um, community partnership director. And so she can do, uh, she can work with media, she can do shows on cable for you, she can talk oh, to PTOs. Really? Okay. The one thing that we've gotten away from is that she, she can't, just because she's one person, has seventh of the state. But... Um, you know, not do school assembly kind of things, but she can do all those things. And I, I, I didn't know how far along the pro process you were on the policy, so I didn't have her come tonight. But she is, she is uh, only a couple towns away. She lives a couple towns away. And, um, you know, so she is there to try to help you figure out how to get this out there. Uh, okay. and, and, and so your retailers, your six retailers, I assume some of them are, tr are chains. They're all... If this change, and they've been living with the standard flavor policy everywhere, um, and so that's somewhere else in Massachusetts. So that shouldn't be new to them. So that's the way we've been trying to get it out there. Uh, I did speak to, to uh, in Lemonster in the fall. I spoke at the school nurses convention. I and my counterpart in November spoke to the ash, the at, annual conference for uh, principals and school superintendents down in the Cape. And so we've been trying to get our foot in the door. And actually, this is the first time we've gotten successfully our foot in the door for the school personnel because they just haven't cared to talk to us much over the years. But now that they have a draw full of jewels, they care, which is fine. And this is the first time that we've seen uh, in the last couple of months school superintendents and principals showing up at public Board of Health public hearings mm -hmm. because of this, because they are stumped as to what to do. Well, I, I think because these are not... I mean, they're so unobvious yeah. to to people that aren't really paying attention. That's right. And, and that's why it's so shocking to me. Yeah. And and it's so scary. It really and, the, is. and the unfortunate part is, you know, we started the program 25 years ago with about 25 percent of the populations using tobacco, and we're down really to single digits in Massachusetts, and low six percent smoking rates in in high schools across the state. But we're right back to the 25 percent for for. I was just going to say I, I, I've heard like between 20 and 30 percent yeah. for um, kids trying Juul in high, in school right. and I, is middle school. I mean, it's absolutely shocking to me. Yeah, and so, so you know we do. You know, none of this is a, a ban, unlike Dover. <laughs> none of this is a ban. So yeah. so Dover's doing this, and they know they're probably going to get sued, but they're doing this anyway, right? They're giving it a shot. I should say, uh, Somerville, the lawsuit is on, but they've not, uh, it's not been reached out to Ashland or Needham yet, um, and so we don't know what they're doing. So if we decided to do um, Somerville's regulations, um, but we made them effective like July 1st, you could sit. You could. You could just sit on them, right? And that's what Ash. That's a, that's what Ashland did too. Is just sit on them. And this see. is not until January one. 
So they were really are sitting back. And Needham is July 1st? Yeah. Okay. When do you think, what's the time frame for the lawsuit? Well, we'll probably see some, well, right now they're asking for a, a temporary restraining order to stop the April 1st start date. So we definitely will hear from the courts by then. And, and that'll give us a clear a clearer indication as to what they think about it if they, if they say no restraining order and it goes into effect on April 1st. That's a likely sense that the that the court doesn't that the court will believe that boards of health have this this is a reasonable health regulation. Right. Extend you know, I mean we really do think that it's hard to uh, it kind of defies logic not to think that extending the two thousand nine federal prohibition to all products and menthol, because menthol is a flavor, is kind of a kind of a logical extension of this. Right. It's just the big the deal is that menthol does represent about 30% of uh, the smoking population's use. Hmm. Um, can we be well, in touch with you on if we did this? Because we're going to do this next week at a public hearing. Okay. So if. What do we do it next week? We're going to um, vote on what we want to do. And. Well, I guess some of, are you talking, Helen? Are we. Um, we're talking. Accepting some of those way, the regulations that have been crafted. We, so Deerfield would just basically put them into our um, form and then. I'm happy to look at them. Yeah, we'd adopt so. them. So I think we need a little more time because we probably have to get a public notice out for that. And we should have the regulations, I think, in our form, you know, where it says yeah. town of Deerfield. And yeah. Well, I to wanted it April 1st, but if we're not um, going to, if we're going to sit on it, the reason why I wanted it April 1st is because I didn't want the kids being able to buy them, you know, in the, when the weather turns nice. But if... I would actually even have said to you, if, it, if that was even possible, I would have said April 1st would have been too fast yeah. okay. anyways, because okay. they will need to sell Well, we down. started talking about this in November. Well, so yeah. we're kinda, They still need, I mean, we typically say is there a, a, is a there 30 a, to 60 day, more, more than 60 day. Is there an effect. age restriction on these right now? Right. Yes. 21. 21. 21. 21. But that doesn't mean that somebody 21 can't go in and buy them and then give them out. Well, that's just one of like the summer bills. Mm -hmm. I know, but that's why so summer bills. So I'm trying to understand the, so, the Well, I mean, some of the other reasons to do it is just that you can keep an eye on a couple stores better than you can all six. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I like Somerville is because they, they say that this is the liquid nicotine is um, acutely hazardous waste. So that makes it, that ramps it up a little bit. Um, and um, it also, um, they talk about it makes it really illegal to give, to buy them at, if you're over 21. Yeah. And then you hand them to the kids. It makes that a legal act, which right now it's not really. But and so. And to finish my thought, it also gets rid of, you know, the advertising, which cities and towns can't do much about. It all, and just seeing the packs and all the products when you go into a convenience store. I mean, it's no accident that most high schools in a, urban or even suburban situation have a convenience store near the high school that has Correct. all this colored stuff, okay. color, flavored okay. colorful okay. stuff. And a woman did testify at, she's on her kid's PTO at her elementary school in Somerville and what, uh, however old you are in third grade, kid was using, a third wow. grade was using, had a, a vape pen. They, they do so, at the elementary school, which so is terrible. To Carolyn's yeah. point, though, DJ, when she's oh. talking about the those things about oh. selling, you know, buying them and reselling them, yep. which she's not listening to me, but um, <laughs> is who's the enfor who does the enforcement on that, like that kind of stuff? That seems well, for I that can kind of stuff, you're the, talking about. That That's kind of more, stuff, the police can. I mean, the okay, state sorry. law does say does say whoever sells or gives tobacco products, and the new state law got rid of the exemption for parents and guardians. Whoever sells or gives uh, can be subject to a fine. So if the police saw this handoff happen in a parking lot, they can do it. And, and our resource officer um, has regular, does regular enforcement with our kids with, for alcohol and cigarettes already. We've had been very successful okay. with that. So can you just bullet point for me what are we trying to achieve here? Right. So what number? Well, actually, it's pretty uh, following you got these along with two what, items. Yeah. Okay. So number well, one, pretty. just uh, unexempting mint, menthol, mm -hmm. and wintergreen. So and that would be for any tobacco product. Yeah. Or so vape product. Yeah. So you would be taking the menthol cigarettes out of any store in a town. Mm. 
Unless they were dealt only retail tobacco store. Which we have none, Trevor. Right. And then, um, but they're still able to keep regular cigarettes. Yes. And then the next item is, what, what, else, what is the It'll other be delimiting item? The, the sale of e-cigarettes to those same retail tobacco stores. And then that would pave the way for somebody else to, to open up a they adult have to have only a, tobacco store. They have to have a permit for right. that. Right. Correct. Yeah, they'd have to come for a permit and, and, you know. Is there any legal reason why they couldn't get a permit? Nope. Nope. You can't, you can't exempt them, but we have a cap of one already. We, we did this in part of our regulation. So this oh, is a board you do. So okay. then again, so, that, but, but, you just but said by that worry, that's, that's creating a, a monopoly. Well, it's not great. Right. Or not. You just said that that's not the most appropriate thing to great. do. Right. <laughs> it's not great to do, I know. Because it, it's just a monopoly. Right. That. I mean, this Creates happened years ago. Right. I remember in Lancaster when they were trying to just do a regular cap. They have so few stores, they were ready to go for one. I'm like, well, you can't have a But do, we did ours <laughs> way before we had right. e-cigarettes. It yeah. was because we didn't want a tobacco only place. And this is a fast moving subject. This is, yeah. 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 Right. Well, this was but, part of our right. cap on cigarette. We only have, we have a cap, six is our cap. Yep. Or maybe eight. I'll have to go back and look. But we only uh, allow eight, uh, six or eight, I can't remember, okay. places anyway to sell cigarettes. Yep. And then it was, I think we eliminate, we only limited the cap for one, like smoke shop. Okay. But, well, I mean, you know, if you we went forward with We could eliminate that. Well, or if you went forward, you can raise it to two. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do either. But, I mean, you are still, you well, know, the I market will only bear so for, much. For, for marijuana, for. right? And we, what we have for alcohol and... Um, I think, yeah, we only have... We have the ability for two marijuana. Um, I just want to think about this a little bit because it's a huge it's okay. decision and yeah. I just want to make sure we're making the and right decision and not an unintended consequence what, and, and, for and, what I mean, we're trying to you, achieve. And, oh, okay. and, and I think also we should, we should look, because Carolyn's looking at more regulations and she's discussing more things than what, what DJ had brought. Is that true? Well, no, you only I'm, brought... I'm looking at the Somerville ones that we got back in December. Right, but those are more, that's, you're, that's talking, you're talking about, about more than DJ's just these. talking about two things. Right, he was just talking about these, but well, you mentioned some things. other things. Which yeah, but this is all this is is the complete regulations. Right, DJ's exactly. Is, is, not, is a is a just like, like the high executive summary. Right, exactly. This is the actual regulations. So you, we should with put the that. definitions. Right, we should and put that. That was why I um, in Deerfield's um, form had Connor, you know, download them and give them to us. And I had, um, you know, the definition. I wanted to make sure, like um, the multi pack. I was interested in eliminating. You know, because one of the things, yeah, because one of the things that we did in our original regulations was you outlawed single ci cigars and mm -hmm. cigarettes and stuff, so kids couldn't buy something for ninety nine cents. Right. And so the idea, if if you, the multi pack things, you make it extremely expensive for yeah. kids, because this is cheaper than cigarettes right now. So if you made it more expensive than cigarettes, then that would also right. discourage. Right. And that has. Yeah, it's difficult to do just because of that. Yeah. Because uh, the variation in product line. Right. We do so it for many. cigars because it's we can cigar. determine that a cigar is anything that's not a cigarette according to the Department of Revenue, but we don't have that kind of clean. But right. one thing I can offer to you, too, is because I, I just looked at your, reg, your current reg quickly. Um, it seems pretty comprehensive. But what I typically do for cities and towns is you tell me what you want, I use our latest sample, I make sure whatever unique is in your current one gets transferred That'd over, and then put in whatever you That'd want. Be and if you have your own, look at it. if then you have your own coding see. and all that. If, right. No, 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 that would be, that would be yeah. perfect. What we want is to do the maximum okay. uh, that we can without actually, I mean, that's why I'm willing to put it in force and then just make it a little later effective. Yeah to sort of sit on it to see yep. how all the lawsuits go and we just afterwards. But I, I absolutely wanted to do as much as we possibly could. And has and, and really there isn't other communities like Waitley and um, different other boards of health that I have talked to in um, different our different meetings are all on board. If we go ahead with okay. this, they're gonna match us. And so hopefully we can do it countywide. 
I, I don't know. Um, Northampton really, is looking at something. I, I know. know. I, I talked to um, Meredith uh, O'Leary down okay. there and Northampton, but they have actual smoke shops there. So there, there's a little bit different yeah. situation than we are, and they have a lot more kids, um, you know, college kids. We, we have, I, I was just worried about our own kids, our young right. kids. Yeah. So, And I'm, I'm, I think my hesitation is I'm worried about an unintended consequence of creating a you know, monopoly of this. Oh, somewhere. I don't think so. that would be a hap is a problem at all, Trevor. Because what we want to do is, as soon as we get ours done, we're gonna. I'm gonna go to all our meetings. Uh, and I was hoping like to have something for March 18th because we have a big meeting, March 18th, and um, county meeting with the boards of health. And so I was hoping okay. on emerging uh, diseases and uh, infectious diseases. So we have a big workshop. So we're gonna have a big turnout, and I have. Uh, a few minutes to talk about what we're doing, so I encourage everybody else to do it. Okay, that might be something that Melinda Caliano should be at. Yes. So March 18th, June. March 18th at the FERCOG at 4:30. 4:30. Okay. Yeah. I'll let her know. Yeah, it's a it's the Mohawk Area Public Health okay. Coalition. Okay. I I chair that, so um, I could give you my, my contact information. We could set that up. I'm sure we have it at MMA. Yeah. I, I'm, yes. <laughs> I'm sure. You um, so is that a, is that an okay way to go? That I yeah, do I up the draft so you can see what it would yes. look like against totality. Yeah. That would be helpful. That'd be wonderful. Right. Thank you so much. Great. That's great. I really appreciate that. Sure. Thank you so much for coming agenda. out. Yeah, it's been oh, no, very like I said, I'm doing it too first, so it's well, it's a lot. it's helpful <laughs> to get the statewide um, approach because I've been talking about this since November and and a few different meetings that I've gone to. People have been really anxious to move forward with this, but there hasn't been a lot of activity. And so when, when I saw Somerville had gone forward, I wanted to do copy Somerville. Right. And, um, but I was hesitant because obviously no one wants to incur legal expenses. Well, no. that's it. I mean, part of the, I mean, it's part of the, I mean, this not only happens with the tobacco industry, but it happens with a lot of edgy issues mm -hmm. that cities and towns run into, right? The opposition will, do a lawsuit and they know it chills everybody else else from moving right so you know if they can get another year's worth of sales out of <laughs> you know oh i know this know. is a ploy this is yeah. what they did with the cigarettes yeah. stuff. well how does the state tax these differently than there's no state tax on vaping products it's only right. the sales tax is, but there are a couple uh, bills in the hopper to try to figure out how to do it but it is complicated because of the variation of products. And how about uh, regulations as far as, um, you know, all the marijuana that's rolling out all has to be tested. Um, right. There's, so, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. Is it just a free reign? So, so this West is the, right you now? know, this is the weird thing, right? So we have, um, you know, tobacco get, has some level of, of yes. purity to it by of the federal course. government. Our state is watching over all the marijuana. Yes. But this the is wide juices, open. Open. But that's why I that's think it's concerning. so important because it's yeah. so terribly addictive. Yeah, you don't know what's coming in from some other country. You have country no idea what's in it. Well, and that's part of the problem. Like, most of these are heavy metals. I don't know about Juul, but a lot of these cigarettes are made in Shenzhen, yes. Shenzhen oh, yeah. China. There's metal and so traces. you're relying on how well those that hardware they is don't. built. Yeah. Mm. And that's what we certainly have seen. You know, it's like once yep. every couple of months, someone has one explode in their leg and their face or, you know, something. Or even just the, the heavy metals that are in the liquid. Yeah. I mean, you, you get cancer causing stuff that's exactly. just in that. And you're heating it up. And you're heating or it chemicals, up. Chemicals vaping. that, like, and this happens in cigarettes too. Sure. In chemicals, flavorings that are safe at a liquid level right. aren't <laughs> at, a, at, at a gas. When they're level. heated up to. Correct. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, that's thank you very helpful. much. Well, thank you, Deirdre. Thank you so much. It. Thank you. I'm, I, I really am appreciative of you coming out because this is such a huge issue. Okay. I'll talk to Melinda. So, okay. um, just before we go on, so you're, you're going to get back to us relatively soon, so. Yes. So we How should often? postpone next week's public hearing then? I, pr yeah. I probably would. Yeah. I think you're a little yeah. too early for yeah. it. Plus, Melinda, that's the kind of Melinda will, Melinda can help you get out, beat the bushes, try to get up supporters. So that's what you Oh, does. it's not really. I, we only have six, like, convenience store kind of right. 
outlet, so oh, it's not. Don't worry, they'll still be. <laughs> the other side will come out for six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that doesn't bother me. That's uh, no, uh, no so, difference. but yes, so I do think yeah. it's perfectly fine to hold off. But I, I'll get you, uh, if you can, send me what you consider the latest. Sure. And then I will this week get it back to you. Okay. Okay. Fabulous. Thank well, you so much. Well, as soon as you'll get it back to me, as soon as I get it to you. <laughs> Is that going to take me a That's day true. or so? <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Okay. Thank you uh, very since much. we have a few minutes, do you want to talk about any of the job description yes, things please. that we have? Yes, um, please. First, let me. Can I just make a quick announcement? I'd like sure. to. Or do you want yeah. to make this on behalf of the town clerk? Or, sure. Yeah. Uh, she wanted to make yeah. those announcements. Um, Let's do that real quick. Okay, the select board at its regular meeting on February 20th, 2019. No, no. She just wants to announce the. These other things? Yeah, just basically well, I just thought what, I would say what the openings are. The, like. the following election ballot for the upcoming May 6th annual town election. So um, there's uh, the town election is May 6th from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And as of today, we have um, open air, open seats for different different things. So selectmen, there's a three-year term. Uh, vote for one. Um, there are three papers out, zero have been returned. Um, the assessors, there's a three-year term, uh, vote for one. One uh, paper is out and, and, uh, and one returned. Um, constables, there's a three-year term, a two-year term, and a one-year term. This year we're starting to stagger the, the constables. Um, so two um, papers have come out, two have been returned uh, for the three-year term. One, um, for the two-year term, one paper is out and for the one year term nobody has applied so if anybody would be interested in being a constable um, we have space there um, for the Deerfield School Committee there's a three year term um, to vote for two and uh, no one has pulled papers we know that there are one there's one person um, <coughs> an incumbent who is not planning to come again so there'll be an open seat for the Deerfield School Committee and uh, there's somebody else who is up but he just hasn't or she hasn't pulled papers yet um, so if anyone's interested in serving on the Deerfield School Committee, there'll definitely be an open spot, maybe two, not sure. Um, elector, uh, elector under Oliver Smith will, um, there's a one year term, um, and one person has taken papers out. Frontier School Committee is a three year term, uh, vote for one, and one person has taken papers out. That's an, uh, up this year. And for the planning board, this is a three year term, uh, vote for two, uh, four people have taken papers out and only one has brought uh, papers returned. So um, we really encourage people, um, you know, if you have a specific skill in any of these areas, if you're interested in finance, if you feel like you have time um, that you could lend to the town, we, we could really use um, an infusion of um, just volunteerism. I mean, people need to, to take part in their town and it only runs as, um, as a democracy if everybody gets involved and we need people involved. So please, um, even if you don't think you have something to add, um, I'm sure you do and we'll help in any way we can get you the information you need to feel comfortable on any board. So um, please come and, and be involved. No one has done for the school committee, Deerfield School Committee? Well, there's, one, there's two people up. One is not planning to run again. And one just hasn't pulled their papers yet. So I okay. don't know if they've just been busy or, oh, but okay. I think they need to have their papers in by, does it say? They're due back at the top in red. March 18th. March, March 18th. 18th. So not very much long to get your papers out, signed, and back. So we encourage you to please do that. Do you want to? Uh, Start on one of the job descriptions. Sure, you have them both in your in your oh, pile. They're okay. at the they're at the end. Toward the end. Toward okay. the end, yeah. Because I had put other stuff in front of them. So the first one is the town. There's a town administrator, and then um, Kip, you'd ask me just to Claire. make copies of the clerical assistant the, one. Uh, um, oh, okay. The assistant town administrator. Oh. oh, that might be oh, Kip's package. <laughs> sorry. Um, did and is that Carolyn? Yes, this is Carolyn. Sorry. There you go, Carolyn. Oh, sorry. Oh. Yep. Um, so the assistant town administrator job, I did find the ad, but I wasn't able to locate the 
the job description on the computer thus far. I, I'm sure we have it between um, my computer and Wendy's, but but we weren't planning to change the description at all. So I just wanted right. to confirm that. Yep. I you think know, that whatever that was we had for case. Connor and his search, I think, is good. Yep. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. So that I was. I just the finance there. committee is very anxious for me to get that posted. So I'll yes. go ahead and get that posted. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. Great. You think you can get done this week? Or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've got great. two now to do. Yes. Yeah, so okay. I'm. Okay. I finally got caught a little ahead of the planning board stuff. So. That's for the assistant. <laughs> Swimming ahead board. a little bit now. So for the town administrator, do you want me to just give a quick recap of where we're yes. at? Yes. So we great. had, um, you know, I, I started to move forward with this process and realized that um, it, there was a. Uh, question whether they, uh, the plan, uh, personnel board had reviewed it and we had reviewed the job description. So we did that. Uh, the, plan, uh, the personnel board met the other night and had a lengthy discussion on, uh, we had uh, an 09, a 2019, and I turned up a 2014. So we took that 2014 version, um, which I think was almost identical to the 19, um, and, and um, went through that. And, Kip had some input. I think everybody's had some input on where that need, needed to be and the changes that needed to be made. And um, the personnel board had had made uh, the changes, and, and we have a copy of them here. I think there was a question on this highlighted section, and you may know this a little bit more than me. There's um, yeah. That was the one that was changed where they were in charge of the budget to just Yeah, to just working collaboratively. So I'll read yeah. it. Um, this is under essential functions, uh, section D, the town administrator works collaboratively with the Capital Planning Improvement Committee and the town accountant to prepare and submit to the Select Board and Finance Committee an operating and capital improvement budget as provided by law. By bylaw, He or she shall monitor town spending through the fiscal year and make financial reports to the selectmen as requested. He or she shall coordinate the development of strategic financial goals for the town and makes recommendations concerning financial policies and practices as directed by the select board. Um, and then I think the first sentence we changed a little bit to, um, I'll just read that statement of duties. The town administrator works with all departments, with all town departments towards, achieve, towards the achievement of common goals for the town. The town administrator shall devote full time to the office and shall not hold any other public office, elective or appointive, nor engage in any other business or occupation during such service unless in advance approved by the select board. Um, I, I, th I think else. that the highlighted part was just uh, for the personnel board to get, if you will, our approval and the finance committee if they mm -hmm. were comfortable with the way it was worded. But I, I to me, I, I, I think that it is. Yeah, it seems. I, I mean, I think it's. Did you have, have, do you have any input, Bruce? Yes. Um, you should have had a revised description. This is, yeah, this other is other than this, other than what you have. Other than what we have. Yeah, as of twelve o'clock. Um, uh, from who? I would imagine from the chair. Um, Who's it, the chair? And it's sure. relative oh. to the highlighted highlighted section. So what do you have, Bruce? The highlighted section. I don't have it with me, but I what we. Um, Propose is we we were talking about capital improvement committee, but we think that after talking with Brenda last night, that the capital planning committee should not be included in that sentence. Right. That, I noticed that's a change from what it was the other night. I should that. no. That's what we discussed the other night. To have to have them the capital. That's improvement. what was said. Oh, then maybe I left. I, I'm sorry, I left after that. I so and that. then so if we the, it should read the town administrator works collaboratively with the town accountant to prepare and submit to the select board and the finance committee any operating budget, take out capital improvement, as provided, and we took out as provided by bylaw, because I don't know if there is a bylaw. But If there is a bylaw, you can leave it in, but that's not our decision. Yep. I don't think there is. I don't think there is. Then um, where it says, um, so you're, so wait, sorry, Bruce. So you're saying as provided by the bylaw to eliminate that? I, I don't, if you. Because I, I don't think, think it does. I don't think there is either. Okay. So just that the, the town administrator works collaboratively. With the town accountant. With to the prepare, town accountant. And submit. To prepare and submit to the select board and finance committee 
and it's really the, the, it's the operating budget only. The operating budget. Not the capital improvement budget. Yeah. Right. And um, then the capital capital improvement planning committee would just, they, they would do their, own work, they and, do their own work and give it to the finance committee and select board and have a bold public hearing. Right, right. Um, then we're sure. at each sentence, the next sentence that says shall, uh, he shall, he, she shall monitor town spending through the fiscal year and make financial reports to the selectmen and finance committee as requested. And then the last sentence where it says directed by the selectmen to be, um, and the finance committee because we're involved with financial policies. If you, if you think that's, that's something you want to add. That's what we proposed. We changed um, Board of Selectmen to Select Board. That was another change we yep. made. Good. And under skills and abilities, we took out the word shall. In every case. Yeah, there were quite right. There was a lot of areas you took yeah. out shall and yeah. So, yeah, just made but them the, a the, the reason that was highlighted is that um, we weren't sure of the language. Mm -hmm. I had asked Skip, uh, our chairman of the finance committee, last night to review it, and he was supposed to get back to me this morning. He hadn't, so we, I made the final revision around noon and said, if you don't hear from me by two, this is it, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm not sure why you don't have that change. I don't. I don't see. I don't, to yeah, but I don't have any problem with okay. changing it. Yeah, That's I don't fine. mind. I don't have any issues with making. That those was the only. Was we made several other small changes in the meeting, um, and they were not major. The only concern is was which job description we were dealing with. That was right. a major concern. Yep. And we put on the bottom of this one, March 2019. Thank you. Yeah, Thank so you we know that much. you've looked yeah. at it. Um, I, I just so got word from the chair that she, uh, the, the only part that she didn't do was this highlighted part, but that was the last that she knew of it. So, okay. 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 So whatever we just changed. Well, there's an email so, out to all the board members around. The so only yeah. question was. So there's been a change after the committee okay. met to yeah. make the changes. To make a yep. change. The chair okay. was unaware of. So my only question would be that the last sentence there, the financial policies is pra um, practices directed by the select board and the finance committee. Um, I guess that makes sense, right? Yeah, I mean, does, I don't, yeah. I well, think it's well, fine. Was like the, that. Could, could I just ask, I'm sorry, what sure. was yep. the change you were making on that last one? So the, uh, well, I'll just adding. read the sentence again. He, she <laughs> shall coordinate the development of strategic financial goals for the town and and makes recommendations concerning financial policies and practices as directed by the select board and finance committee would be added. So only at the direction of those folks? Uh, well, that's what I'm wondering. Typically, the finance committee would make recommendations, but not direct, right? Is it correct? I guess the question is, are you, right. are you asking the administrator to only coordinate, the to only no. make recommendations as directed, or do you want them to make recommendations no, as they yeah. discover operational? Of course, yeah. I think that was initiatives and whatnot. Or so it, it can says be collaborative. Work, work it says the town administrator works collaboratively with the accountant to prepare and submit to the select board and finance committees an operating an operating budget um, budget. Um, he, she shall monitor the town spending through the fiscal year and make financial reports to the selectmen as requested. He, she shall coordinate the development of strategic financial goals um, to the town and, and, and make recommendations concerning financial policies and practices. Um, I think collaboratively, right, with the select board and finance committee? 
we're yes, not directed by? I'm just no, 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 it should be collaborative. collaboratively, right? Because if you find something that we're not aware of and you work collaboratively, well, I would think I'd be, I'd be making recommendations to you and right. to the finance committee. Correct. If I discover things, and yes. then you would also, if you discover things, you would collaboratively. Be, that makes but, sense. But I don't think it's just I'm not. If if I'm just waiting for the finance committee and select board to direct me right. to create strategic financial goals, I guess I'm a little confused because I feel like that's what I what you sort of do all the time when right. you're doing this. I think that the collaboratively job. sounds. How about it if at the end where it said practices, uh, you admit, omit uh, as directed by the select right. board and put to the select board and finance committee. And that way, you know, it she can. Uh, Right. And then it's you up know, to develop you. Develop whatever to, it is. Right. Right. It's up to you to, to take right. those recommendations. Of course. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. It does to me. Yep. Yep. You okay with that? Yep. Okay. I am. I just want to make sure we're the all the corrections are to oh, everybody's so on we'll the same page. Eliminate yeah. as directed so by can, and just add the word to the up. select board. So so we're going to have committee. this posted tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. real quick. I mean, well, we're yeah, because this is I'm working with. The team to get out and do this yeah. search. I, I just exactly. want to make sure we get going. On this. Yeah, we will. Yeah, okay. we've been waiting on this. Yeah, so I think we're going forward. Um, do you want to take a vote on this? As changed? I make a motion that we um, approve this job description as amended. Second. Is there any further discussion? Nope. And then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Great. All right. Do you want to go into right. the? Might as well go to the other meeting. Now. Yeah. Okay. So you have, um, of course, this is going to be a joint meeting. This isn't the, actually the hearing. We are required by bylaw, although I, Barbara did tell me I got a message today that that, that. that change has been made. But yeah. we'd already advertised. So there is an advertisement um, that should be in the paper today. I didn't verify, but it was for today um, that we'll have a hearing on the capital plan a week from today. A week so from, week from today. tonight. So, so at 630. So we'll 630. do the hearing then, but yep. tonight is basically for you and the Finance Committee and the Capital Improvement Planning Committee to all discuss the budget in totality Great. with the capital requests um, to determine if there's any changes. Tomorrow morning we are intend to publish the capital plan for inspection um, and then have the hearing next week. Okay. And you have all that information in your packet, the plan, and um, you also have uh, part of what Skip had asked me to get, give you, uh, or to have was the capital uh, for the school as well. Yep. Um, and the article that was requesting, um, you know, to fund that as part of the capital request this year. Do you want to invite the committees up? And yes. You guys well, want to I don't know if there's enough room, but <laughs> yes. drag some chairs, chairs up. up. Do you want to, anybody want to come up? Yes, you all have to come on. Where's your yep. leadership? Yeah, Everyone. where's the leaders? Come on up. <laughs> you have to come, come up. up. Thank you. Everyone needs to come up so we can. And then we have to introduce yourselves. I won't bite. Someone can sit next to me, too. Yeah, seat here. Sit here. One over here if you want. Rachel, you can sit over here if you're interested. Over here. There's two here. Thank you. There's two here. Good. How are you? Oh, thank you. Thank you. I think I have a job, but yep. that's good. Just in case. Okay. Some spares if anyone needs. Alright. Did you see here? Ken. No, she's Ken. Oh, Ken, is he coming? Where is Ken? Oh, there he is. It's over there. How are you? Skip, can you go on there? You know by heart. <laughs> hey, Jack. Hey, John. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Hear them say we're going to have next Wednesday is the hearing for capital. Pardon? Did I hear them say that next Wednesday is the capital presentation? Hello. Yeah. Hi, Ken. Six thirty. Here. Here. Yeah. Here, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There should be at least a few of us here. Catches me when I fall asleep.
call okay. your meeting to order. Good evening. Yes, we're going to call the uh, capital improvement March 6th uh, meeting to order. And that will be at 5.05. And tonight, obviously, we're meeting in a joint committee format just to do a presentation of our capital projects plan that we have. And before I get started, uh, I'd like to thank the committee members that worked on this. And I'd like to uh, mention John. He's put a lot of effort into the five-year plan. Brenda, for looking that over. And Jack has done a great job uh, keeping us in line, posting meetings and minutes. So we appreciate everybody's effort. This year, uh, as you all know, has been a little unusual. It's been kind of a difficult year because we've had several moving targets in trying to put together a uh, capital projects plan has not been the easiest for us this year. I think the committee has done a great job yeah. for the moving targets that we've dealt with. And uh, I would like to start, and I know that this is FY 2020 we're going to be looking at as far as first year, but I'd like to take a step back to 2019 mm -hmm. because I think that's important. We've had uh, three, or we've had two special town meetings, and we have another, a third coming up this Monday, uh, the 11th, I believe it is. Yes. And so that's going to put us at a third special town meeting. And the reason why I want to back up there, if you take a look at year 2019, uh, FY 2019, if we start at the top, you'll notice that we've had to vote or at least recommend and then vote monies at these special town meetings. This, is, this has taken place after the annual town meeting that we had in April. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you look down the column here, we're looking at money that has either been voted already or will be proposed to be voted on the 11th, Monday. And we're looking at one million $173,400. That is a big chunk of change. Uh, I want, and I'm hoping, the residents of Deerfield realize how important it is to get involved, to watch your dollars, come out and vote. Uh, because your vote, your opinion, is going to set the future for this town. Uh, and we'll quickly go down through. Voted at a special town meeting, town offices, there was a $30,000 uh, recommendation, and that was to assess town buildings. And just, uh, it's not a feasibility study, it's just an assessment to get an idea of where our town buildings are, what shape they are, and some of the things that we need to anticipate as far as costs, as far as repairs, updates, and so on and so forth. So uh, that $30,000, I think myself personally, will be money well spent because it will give us an idea of, of future expenses we have coming down the road. Mm -hmm. A roadmap. A roadmap. Right. All our town buildings are assets, and if you have a tendency to neglect those, it's just like your own home. If you neglect them, day. they're just going to get worse. And then you're going to have to spend huge money to try to bring them back. Yep. The uh, 74600 that's for the wastewater treatment plant, that is in progress. Uh, I checked with Brenda, and last I knew it was a little over 58000 that we have spent. And that was for David Prickett as far as the assessment, as far as the planning. I, yeah, I talked to, just to give a little update. Um, okay, thank so you. People may be curious. I talked to David today. 
and I talk to him, I've talked talk to him almost every other day. Um, but we, um, he hopes to have that assessment completed. Uh, he was thinking this week or early next week he'll have that completed so people could start pouring over the assessments of both both plants and, and our, I mean, the whole system. Right. So that's kind of what, that system. was the basis for all of, you know, where we're going forward. But um, should have that ready. So he'll be, that, at, he'll be right. at Monday's. And that also well. covered the application for the USDA grant. Right. Correct. Yeah. And that that was voted at special town meeting and yes, it is being spent and it will be spent very shortly from the sounds of it. Yeah. The next item is one million dollars for the first phase and that's to be voted at this Monday special town meeting. Mm -hmm. And the one million dollars, just so everybody knows, the one million dollars is simply a small portion of a toll of, if we include interest, approximately $36 million project. Yep. And that's just for the wastewater treatment plants. And I, I'm hoping that some way, shape, or form when we start dealing with these things, that uh, either the town administrator, town accountant, select board, be able to get together in, in uh, the assessor's office and maybe put a dollar amount to per million mm -hmm. on the effect it's gonna have on the tax base yep. for people so they can understand it, no matter how it's gonna be funded. Even if we right. get grants and 50% grants, at least, at least I think Myself personally, I think the residents need to know what's coming, what's coming, how it's going to impact their property taxes, yep. and understand the big picture. Yep. This is just the wastewater treatment plant. We have several other projects here that we're going to have to deal with also. Yes. Actually, yes. Jeff, I, I just would like to clarify that for you. This is the repair that right, is of the clarifier of the clarifier the broken clarifier you normally have two clarifiers one was already broken right this is our second clarifier and it is actually impaired and as a result if we don't get it fixed and we start right. oh we have no choice in we this. yeah this is right. mandated dep right. yes we have no yeah. choice in this first phase this so this is why really we don't have any choice this is in why it's water. out of schedule right right in phase it's, one two is going to be I mean, right. we, it just, really that just has the to first happen step. exactly okay. Yep. And then uh, recommended $20,000, $20, and that ended up coming out of the reserve fund, mm -hmm. just recently voted for the Mill Village Road uh, migration, water migration assessment. And the reason that came to the reserve fund was because of the timing to apply for uh, application for uh, grant money. Mm -hmm. And that's why we could not put it off till further as far as the town meeting, special town meeting goes. The deadline for the hazardous mitigation, mitigation um, program is April 4th. And we were running on a really tight schedule um, having our town meeting earlier, so when it was on February 25th. So when um, that was canceled because of uh, posting errors, and we rescheduled for the 11th, there was not enough time to apply uh, for the work, uh, the work necessary to apply to the grant. So um, I am very appreciative of the finance committee taking this opportunity to support it so we could apply. And just to recap, that's, that's the assessment of the water at kind of, if you say uh, Richardson's Candy Kitchen, as that whole kind of stream that comes off the river and then uh, and then goes uh, through the fields and out to the river. We have a culvert we're hoping to change and then follow that problem all the way up through because that culvert is crushed under at 5 and 10, trying to work with the state, get all that cleaned up. And all the Wapping assessed. Road area. Wapping it's road. gotten to the point where when you have a couple inches of rain, um, it Our floods. Cars are flooded. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think the culvert on Route 5 was crushed. It was one on Mill Village Road that was yeah. caving in. Oh, because so, when you look at the one under 5 and 10, you can't even see either end of it. You, well, they're well, not cleaning they're it out. They're not, not cleaning it out. They're oh, just cleaning it out. Gotcha. Okay. There's no place for that water you. to go. Yep. So and the reason, again, the reason why this was such a good opportunity is because under the Municipal Vulnerability um, Preparedness Program, we had received a grant to um, do the hydraulic study of the area, and there's a certain amount of upstream that kids to be covered, 
And so half of what the work was already done under previous grant. So for the 20,000, we can get the extra stuff done plus the application and hopefully it will leverage a few hundred thousand dollars in repair money. Mm -hmm. Yep. The so last item you. here, uh, that was in the capital plan already, but uh, obviously emergency came up. There's 48,000 in the capital uh, plan, supposedly for, I forgot, either next year or the year after, but because of the leaking of the roof, it had to be done. Uh, that was, the 48,000 was approved at the special town meeting, and we did have $800 overrun, which the $800 was transferred uh, from the free cash by the finance committee, so okay. that, uh, project has been completed. Is that right? Reserve fund. Reserve, reserve fund. fund. Right, Excuse me. Reserve Great. fund. Thank you. Uh, the reserve fund. So that project has been completed. And obviously it came out of the capital improvement plan for yep. future years. Yep. So that sums up the dollar amount for 2019 that we had after the annual town meeting in April. And I'd just like to thank your, your um, committee for being willing to work with us on that because I know it gets frustrating. You put a lot of work into a five-year plan. You go to town meeting, you think you're all set for the year, and then all this stuff comes up that you, it, it wasn't anticipated, it's been a problem. We're trying to get better at you know anticipating this stuff and getting it going forward so we're not like scrambling last minute having special town meetings, having you do all this work, voting outside, you know, we don't know if it's the right bylaw, we're scrambling on all that stuff to get it done, but I want to thank you guys for, for taking the time to do all that stuff this year. Well, thank you on behalf of the committee. And uh, let's shift into FY 2020 now. Okay. Um, once again, uh, committee members, please feel free to speak up if I misspeak or if I miss something. Uh, the FY 2020, we received 12 requests and nine out of the 12 we recommended. There was one item in here that we included ourselves. There wasn't really a request, but once again, it's a, a moving target and I'll explain that in a minute. Okay. Uh, with those Nine uh, out of the 12 requests, actually, one of the three that we did not recommend, they found uh, an alternative, and so their uh, request they took right off the table. Okay. So, to start off with, on top, we go back to the wastewater treatment plant. And there's a $955,760 figure in here. <clears throat> We're, as far as the capital improvement plan, and I think the select board and anybody else that's involved with that, we're just not sure of how quickly we're going to be able to progress with this project. And as I said, I'd like to restate, it's a major project, almost a $36 million project that they're looking to do over, I believe, a 12 to 13, 13 year, year schedule. Yep. So uh, there was not a request for any money for that wastewater treatment plant, mm -hmm. but the committee felt like we should have something in there just in case we were able to complete the clarifier mm -hmm. this year. And if and something that, came right. up for next year, at least there'd be some money there so we wouldn't be scrambling at the last minute. What That's we did idea. for a dollar figure was uh, John had a great idea of we went back and we picked up on Prickett's schedule yep. that he had and we pulled that number out of the schedule and just yep. plugged it in for the 2020 year. That money may be needed and it may not. If it's not needed, we can kick it right forward, forward to the, uh, you know, back another year. If it's needed, at least it's there, so we don't have to scramble again right. uh, trying to find money. 
It's so a, it's a good idea again, because it's, uh, anticipated. And if people aren't comfortable with that, obviously the select board has the right to amend this mm -hmm. uh, schedule. So yeah. just so I understand and make it clear, the million dollars is going to be voted at our special town meeting next Monday. Then there's going to be an additional million dollars at our annual town that meeting. That is correct. It's almost okay. two million dollars in a Okay. basically three month period because I think that's wastewater treatment that's At the I annual think, town meeting I don't think that's been requested it hasn't been yet this is based on a cash flow projection by right. cricket right because right. right. they think that we were I mean the idea I think behind that and I think you guys are right is that um, providing the grant comes through we're not sure how much we'll get 25% mm -hmm. we don't know what it is or what the rate would be but right. if that does come to Flourish, and we'd love to be able to start construction drawings, and we're going to need cash for that. You know, some sort of money to get that drawing well, that going. Was, that was that was the idea. This committee makes sense. Did try to anticipate a little bit, I'm even glad. though, that, like John's, absolutely correct. There was not a request for this, right? Uh -huh. But we didn't want to get caught short either. Smart. Seeing how we could always push it back a year. From I, I would anticipate that we would have some information prior to town meeting, though as to the what is happening from the grant front and plus mm -hmm. we would have hopefully a couple sewer committee meetings by then mm -hmm. to discuss what our options are and what direction i mean we're going to have we're public discussion right. yeah. on that grant yeah well, that's that's why i said this is one of those moving targets where yep yeah. no it's, it's good to have something there and try to build a five-year plan when you have things like this taking place it's such as, a huge number as the finance committee like um, um commented on how how we'd go about getting that that million dollars pardon yep. as the finance committee commented as how we would finance that million dollars the not, second million dollars not to this moment okay that's to be determined you know uh there's obviously been discussion of sure. skip if he wants to well we were, we were thinking maybe bake sales and <laughs> <laughs> Well, consider but well. We, we will have sewer reserves yeah. certified. We will have sewer reserves certified by the fall. So and, I mean, some well, of that money well, could yeah. be a, it's, gonna, it's gonna be it's money that has to be borrowed. We're not gonna right. take yeah. it out of our back pockets. Correct. Right. Okay. And hope so hopefully this is a million dollars it's gonna have to be borrowed. And hopefully it's in the shape of a of a forty year loan with a with a big with a nice grant attached, but we're not sure. We're working on it. Yes. We'll find out, but that's a good good place marker. Okay. Yep. And then we go down. There's uh, a request here. <clears throat> and I just give me one second. The roadside mower uh, for the highway department, that's through Eversource, $26,000. There's a notation here. $26,000 is paid annually by Eversource, so it's kind of a wash, mm -hmm. but it still has to be reflected there. Yep. Uh, highway Department requested a F-350 uh, pickup with nine-foot plow for $40,000, and that was recommended. A mini excavator for Highway Department, $66,000. That one was not recommended. Is it a reason? Do you know? Or do you, do you want to, I don't know if you want to get into why or not. Or just well, curious where well you're we at. can. And it was, a, it was not an easy decision. Mm -hmm. There's quite a bit of discussion about that. Uh, one, uh, that was not built into five year plan yet. Yeah. Uh, two, we have a backhoe uh, that the town owns that pretty much does the same thing. Three, uh, what's been happening in the last year or two is that they use the backhoe for the majority of the work, mm -hmm. but on occasions when they do need a smaller uh, piece of equipment, they've been renting it, yep. and it seems to be working. Uh, so they, they, had, they had told us that they spend about $2,000 a year to rent a mini excavator. So it seemed like a really long payback to buy one. Well, I know they were hoping to, you know, 
if they could have gotten a, a lot of trade in for the backhoe, they would have done that in a minute, I think, because they would really rather have an es excavator to get in these tight spots, right. not have to block off the road. I mean, he, I was at that meeting, so, so I explained so in a, a lot in of that. So in any case, it seemed, it seemed Maybe another year of studying that? Yeah. Well, it, it, also, and to be, it also seemed like it was a, it was something that would be nice to have, but, but based critical. on the other, the other expenses facing the town, we felt that we, we should maybe put off that. And have, uh, have another year of study you know, in since that. Since it was really okay. an optional purchase. It yep. wasn't a, right. the, 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 the plow truck had to be replaced. Correct. Right. The sewage so. plant has to be fixed. Yep. The, well, and, and you know. also to be fair, um, we were going to anticipate much more use if we had a supervisor hired for the Mosquito right. District. Well, we did going to be a lot this more. Year. Yeah, yeah. So we look did not at it recommend again. it for this yeah. year because of the yeah. uh, you know part of what Jack Big stated. Sense. But also, though, we didn't want to shut it down completely mm -hmm. because of what Carolyn's saying that there could be a further need for a smaller uh, thing. So that's why, if you look and and we discussed this a little bit. Uh, it could be a little confusing to people, but we did bring it back into the capital plan okay. for 2023 okay. because they had a zero dollar amount there. Yep. And so it would be just for future consideration. Okay. If if they go a couple of years or a year or whatever the case may be, and there's no question about it that they need that piece of equipment, bring it then up then. They can. It's in the five-year plan. They can, can re, right. They can request it again, and it can come up for consideration again. Okay. Or we Sounds could figure good. out some some right. way or to we utilize could it out some more. Way of, yeah. of, of doing this. I, I, okay. That's it, great. It's very disappointing. That's all. And so that's not Kevin's fault. Right. We're, we are yeah. trying to work and, on that. And the highway department, Kevin, and they did a great they presentation. Understand. Yeah. But yeah. obviously, there's some some concerns here, and as Jack said. Yep. We're also trying to look at the big picture because when we get into future years, uh, you'll see some huge numbers that I think will scare people. Yeah. Okay. And then we had a request for town common improvements. Mm -hmm. And also we had quite a reckon, uh, quite a discussion about this too but Thank it was you. recommended for the forty thousand dollars but that's not it's not for actual improvements it's correct it's for a uh an, ass, an assessment an design assessment, assessment. design right. yeah so i can it, go ahead do you have a question, have a question. sure um, so I'm gonna explain it, but a little bit i would like to know um do you have a written quotation for the design fee no and so a lot like the so this uh, very similar so, to what we did with this with the sewer um, is that we know that um, so I've been working for a couple of years on trying to get um, the town common uh, ADA safe so that the sidewalks are horrible the benches are bad and then the the sidewalks around it and the crosswalks that cross it um, don't match up they're not ADA compliant we're working with um, the, on the complete streets program, but it's kind of, and I can't really do much with the common until we have that kind of figured out and they kind of go hand in hand and I, so the goal was to kind of have, uh, uh, I requested 75,000. There was discussion. It was reduced to 40, which is fine. I really just so, wanted so to, the four, the 40 was 10% of the expected grant, right? And that makes sense. And that's fine of the, of the 10%. Well, there's a grant for, for complete, the complete streets, street grants is four hundred thousand, and and that's not really uh, the. And I think you said that that normally the uh, the design was ten percent. That might have come yeah. from you, Bruce. Right, but that not complete streets is not going to fund the cost. Correct. No. Well, Correct. It's not going to Correct. fund. Correct. So how do you come up with four hundred thousand dollars for the common? I didn't come up with four hundred thousand for the common. Well, somebody's. Right. So they're conflating. Uh, they're conflating the two. So let me just explain again. The issue was I wanted some money set aside so that I didn't have to go, hey, guess what? We finally got somebody. We got, we got to put this together. We don't have anything in the budget. As a five-year plan, I wanted to have some money set aside so when we could get Ty and Bond or a, um, or a landscape architect to, to work in conjunction with Ty and Bond on the complete streets project, once I know where the crosswalks go, I, know, I, can, I can be sure where 
the sidewalks need to be redone on the common. That's my main goal is to make the common safe for walking. And, and those crosswalks have to line up with, with the crosswalks on the road. And right now they don't, and right now they're not safe, either the crosswalks or the sidewalks. So once that complete streets work is done, this 40 may not be spent this year at all. It, it, it's just a, it's to have it available in case that project moves forward, which Complete Street seems to be doing. Once that's done, we'll go, okay, this crosswalk's gotta go here. We're gonna line it up with this. So the, the idea is to, to have some money. If it can be used strictly for construction, great. I'd rather not spend it on design, but there is a lot of stuff underground. There's electrical underground. It was money to help us do it smartly. So when we do that, when we do the crosswalks over, we line it up with the Complete Streets program. So whether it gets done this year or not. It was my understanding that we had to spend some amount when we finally landed on 40,000. Yep. We had to spend some amount in order to apply for the grant. Well, no, uh, no, yes, you can apply for the grant, but what you want to do is move the grant forward. Right. You don't want to wait for another town meeting, especially mid-year. Okay, right. The idea, yeah. I, idea is to not but vote we have, out. We have to spend some amount of yes, money. Correct. We will be spending right. some and, kind and of money. And we don't know at we, this point exactly what that number is. And so if we wait is. for we have a definitive number, then you're out of sync for, you're voting out of your request time frame. And the whole point of this is to try to get into a cycle and identify where your expenses are so that you're not voting these individual things like in September or October. Mm -hmm. not, to, not to jump ahead, but you'll notice in uh, 2021, mm -hmm. there's another $40,000 request for that. Okay. And in 2022, there's another $20,000 request for that to continue this through. So it's not gonna happen in just one year. Uh, but Jack is right, as a committee, we struggled with this. Mm -hmm. uh, and, we did. And no I fault for anybody. It yep. came to us at the 11th hour. It did. Uh, and all of a sudden, we're trying to figure out where all this money's coming from, why, how, who, where, mm -hmm. when. And there's several concerns. Uh, and once again, the committee had a tough time with this because once again, it was a little bit of a moving target as Trevor explained that right now there's not a lot of answers for this project. Mm -hmm. The intent is there, the direction is there, but to get anything specific, it's not there yet. Right. And that's why this committee struggled with that as far as being able to recommend it or not recommend it. Yeah. And, and we kind of came up with 40,000. Right. Okay. Right. Bruce? Yeah. Uh, I, well, I was at the meeting on Blade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the, the labeling of this item is incorrect. I think mm -hmm. it should be complete streets. Mm -hmm. Is that what we were talking about? Is that what we wanted to well, do? we asked, but... I think, that's, I think that's a good point. I mean, like, like you're saying, the projects have sort of come together. But I think in the first instance, we need to deal with the crosswalks and the ADA right. pieces, which is going to be the complete Which would then piece. affect that. So that's but fine. Bruce I'm is fine right. with it's that. Not, the 40000 isn't for any improvement. It isn't right. for any piece of sidewalk. Correct. It's for... So maybe we, so we should... That. So I think we should relabel it as... Well, I think that's important because I was not at that meeting, but you know, forty thousand dollars to draw plans for a piece of property that's not as big as this one room, and it's all surface work. You know, yeah. sidewalks, trees, benches. You know, I think a lot you'd get a lot of pushback from that. But if it's explained like it's part of the complete street things, where it's going to be a, a lot more area, it's more, you know, uh, acceptable. It's, yeah, well, it's what needs to happen. That complete streets that will dictate my, what we do. My impression there was for design of the. Right. Streets. Correct. Okay. Okay. And this money will only be spent if the grant Correct. is received. Right. Right. Correct. And then, and then eventually we're going to, you know, Complete Streets isn't going to, so here's the problem with Complete Streets is that whole part of town is owned by the state. So they'll only, I mean, my understanding is they're only going to fix, you know, uh, a portion of that common sidewalk. They're not going to fix all of it. Well, so we, well, we don't know. We don't know we all of this. To, we, yeah. What we recognize is that, and what you Correct. saw when you first got that quote, is that the project is more complex. It's extremely complex. So could complex. we relabel this to right. clarify things? <clears throat> Town common improvements slash complete streets? 
just add stuff. slash and complete streets? Why not just, I think why not just label it complete streets? Well, because there well, because is town, some town common component. And, and, and it may have to be that we do that complete streets first and then uh, we come for, for appropriation for the town common. They have to be separate items. And so I, I just didn't want to go another whole year and, and yeah, hey, you guys didn't put anything in for this project and we're like stuck going, well, we need some money to figure out what we do on the common. And you're right, 40000 is ridiculously too much for sidewalk work. But I needed to have some sort of money there to, to push the complete streets forward and then also to have something to figure out what we, how we tie in the common. Because there's a lot of electrical there, there's plumbing for the fountain, you know, there's so much to be done. And I, it's really I, complex because the state owns the stoplight in Northampton this afternoon. Yeah. And I was looking at the ADA compliance sidewalk with the, the bubble The bubble thing. Yep. Yep. And beautiful. And in the middle of the sidewalk was a telephone pole <laughs> that no uh, no engineering wheelchair, got. no wheelchair that I know of is going to get. And I, I just hope we don't make that no, mistake. It, that, that's and, my and, key. Is there's so much to plan. I don't know why that that happened all over oh. Northampton. Yes. Okay, How can that have happened? Why would you do that? There was no money to move the utility right. poles. Is my guess. Yeah, so probably. that's another component that we have to watch out for. Yeah. And that's, that's the key. I just really wanted to have, like the Those sewer are, thing, yeah, some sort okay. of figure there that, hey, we're going to spend a little bit of money on this. It's a priority that I hear from a lot of constituents that they want safe sidewalks downtown and the crosswalk and some benches. And, and, hopefully, and you know, my thought would be once we got to benches and maybe the sidewalks on the common that we could look at CPA funding for that because it's an open space area. Um, so I just wanted to have something available to be able to to get this thing moving. Right. Uh, but I don't know how, you know, it's complicated. And I, I, could I just add something? I just, because you're talking mm -hmm. about the name of the, of the count. So I just want to be clear because when I, when I started working on this a year ago, it was sort of pre-complete streets. It was working mostly with the common folks and they had been pretty invested and been working on this project, as I said at the last meeting, for decades. So um, I, I just want to be clear that we, the, there, they are very two different projects. The common is, is what the things you're talking about is landscape and pathways, and some of that is aesthetics. And there's mm -hmm. still some conversations going all around about where to put what. And complete streets is very different from my perspective in that it's a safety issue, it's accessibility issues, and those things. Um, you know, are, are going to be developed in that plan that we're going to be, that we've already Priority got funded. Stage. So we're right. already going to have a plan for what projects need to happen. The idea is next year to get some of those projects funded and then design those individual projects, whichever they are. They might be a strip of sidewalk here. It might be some four-way accessibility improvements here. It might be a couple yep. different things, whatever they are. Um, and so having that money to do that. Right. I just want to say all that because what it does leave out is, you know, not, you know, moving things on the common, the right. things you're talking and I, about. And I think the so committee... So I just want to be clear. I don't want to, no, I don't want it to seem like I hijacked No, it, it's not because I, the, because I know how money. critical <laughs> that stuff needs to get done. We, that's why we've been hamstrung for two years on this thing because every time we look at it, we can't move forward without right. knowing where those crosswalks are and the safety improvements there. So we know we'll have to take a back seat. Okay. We Thank wish you. it could be I done quicker, sure but, but I just want to do it smartly mm -hmm. and, and efficiently. And, and if, if it takes years to get done, it does. I just, but I want to do it right. And I want to make those improvements for the residents. So okay. Thank that's you. it. Yep. Okay, to get back. Yes, yeah, sorry. And it is. It's very difficult. That's why I say yep. we as a committee discussed it. We had a hard time with it because of all the factors involved there. Yep. And, again, Appreciate a little work. bit of a moving target. Yep. Thank you. Uh, the next item, the police motorcycle. And uh, that was requested 13-5. 13,500 and the committee voted not to recommend that. The uh, buy, out, buy out the lease. Pardon? That's to buy That's out the lease. That's to buy out the lease, right. And uh, that was again the big picture as far as monies and it's one of those things that uh, nice to have but is it really needed? Mm -hmm. And once again we come down to the wants and the needs. Yep. 
And was was the motor sale going to be continued to be leased for another year, or was it going to be turned back if it's not purchased? I believe it'd be going back. I'm not I'm not positive, but I think I think there's a 13.5 uh, to buy it out. Yeah. And if it's not bought out, I believe it'd okay. be returned. Okay. okay. The next item would be. I'm sorry, Bruce. Bruce. Just out of curiosity, uh, who paid for the lease for the first few years? I think the police taxpayers. Police budget. Right. They, they, had they, had a, they had a grant, I, I believe, there was right? A grant for the they had a gift. Gift. Oh, a gift. Don't, don't gift. Know. So it was right. Maybe not. No. It was a donation. Came out of the police well, budget. I don't know did not. Looking at the details. Yeah. I okay. Remember. Right. Yeah. But there was a sort of program, but okay. The next item: police radios to upgrade from 400 to 800 MHZs, and it was a $45,000 request, and $45,000 were recommended, or was recommended, excuse me, with the potential of, of uh, possibly some grant money uh, or and or radios being uh, donated to Deerfield, to the town of Deerfield. So well, that- We just had a meeting, numbers? we just had a meeting on Monday and we're, the grant application is April 1st, so the grant is going in under the, you know, on your cell phones you pay the 911 um, little fee, so that's going in under the grant, and that's how the state is going to fund our radio, or the request for the radio units as we migrate over to the A hundred system <coughs> instead of building a separate um, radio <coughs> parallel mm -hmm. radio system, replacing the one we have currently. That is falling apart. Yes, it is. Right. He mentioned to you that the cost is falling. On the radios. Yeah, well, right. the, the Did, thing is, there's, there now is instead of just Kenwood um, providing um, the radios, there is Motorola has come in, and the competition has gone from like $6,000 per unit down to like 2200 because the state is going to be, be buying, you know, like hundreds. So um, ultimately, hopefully this money will not be spent, but if the radio system, if we switch over to the radio system, which will happen before the end of the year, um, and the grant doesn't come through, we will have to have radios. So right. it was important to put this in, even though well, the I would key is say. It makes communications a lot better. Yes. That's, oh, that's yeah. the And line. ultimately, because right. we're, transferring, we're transferring over to the state um, system, radio system, mm -hmm. we will not be paying our assessment into the FERCOG. So this would, our radios would be paid for within a two or three years anyway. Okay. Yeah. Right. Time, Due right? to time, we gotta yep. move on. Uh, the Skims Ambulance request of 243000 for a replacement of ambulance, and it was uh, recommended for $243,000. Uh, that's replacing the international ambulance that they've been having major problems with and running up repair bills. Uh, so uh, it's a 2010. <coughs> but because of it being the international cost effectiveness, uh, purchasing a Ford and having all three vehicles as far as Fords would be, able be, to be more repaired efficient, a little more cost effective, and <coughs> we we're more or less in line. Uh, the next ambulance- you might, to, you might want to mention that's coming out of their retained earnings. Right, it's yes. coming out of their retained <coughs> earnings to 243, thanks John. And uh, the next ambulance replacement, uh, the understanding is that it won't happen until 2025. Okay. And, and so that's why you won't see it on this uh, falls off the capital page. project plan. And then we get to the Deerfield Elementary School and door hardware replacement uh, request 12,500. Recommended 12,500. Restroom renovations. Uh, these are the public restroom areas that are in pretty tough shape. 15-3 uh, was requested and 15,300 was recommended. The gym floor uh, renovations on the gym floor. Uh, 15,500 was requested, 15,500 
was recommended and then replacing flooring uh, throughout the building, 18,000 uh, requested and 18,000 recommended. Uh, again, this is uh, an asset, a town asset, and if you don't maintain it, it's just going to be more expensive down the road. So that brings you, we actually, without the wastewater treatment plant, we had request of $534,800 uh, recommended with the wastewater treatment plant, $1,411,060. So uh, basically you're looking at 2.5 million in a matter of three months. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say hopefully taxpayers are paying attention to this and uh, hopefully Run for some somebody offices. will be able to figure out how it's gonna, how it's gonna impact their taxes. Or run for the hills. Either. Yeah, run for the hills or run for office, one of the two. <laughs> oh. Skip? Uh, yeah, uh, did, did the Capital Committee have an opportunity to Look at the frontier capital request. We we have not. Uh, that really doesn't fall within our jurisdiction per se because it's a regional, and so uh, that will go directly. My understanding is that will go directly to the town voters of all four towns, and they're going to have to make that decision uh, the way it's designed. But you haven't looked so, at it to know what's involved. I, I myself personally have, but as a committee, no, we have not. Because uh, that, as I said, it's a, it's a regional budget, and that does not. But that's going to impact, too, because uh, what Skip is talking about is that the Frontier Regional School is going to be requesting uh, capital improvement for their school system. And what was it, 1.8 or something of that nature? I'm not sure what the number is. I think it's around 1.8 million. <clears throat> and, and our portion, Deerfield's portion, it's going to be roughly about a million dollars for, for capital improvements at Frontier. So uh, they're going to be looking to do that, I believe, at the annual town meeting this year. So add that on top of the numbers that we just gave you. And now you're up around 3.5 mil that you're going to have to uh, fund at some point. Just so everyone here knows that the, uh, the gym floor renovations at the elementary school is primarily they're going to resurface it. Right. Um, that's exactly what needs to be done at Frontier. But Frontier thinks that their floor is too old and they want to replace the thing at, a, I think it's $123,000. That's Just something that idea. the yeah. town voters on, on that, on Frontier Regional, they're going to have to uh, hopefully do their homework, uh, take a look at, at the uh, plan, and then vote it at town meeting. Yeah. Well, you, you, will hear, you will hear language that the floor is at it, its end of its useful life, and the elementary uh, school was built shortly after Frontier's gym, you know, so they're pretty right. much the same age. Before Frontier's gym. What's that? The elementary school was built before Just the before the gym at Frontier? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, so it's less. Yeah. Quite a few years before. Yes. Right. So anyways, uh, to continue on here, one thing we did want to note that the numbers that are here uh, do not reflect any grant money that we may be able to secure, and if we are, the grant money would be applied to the appropriate accounts and to reduce those numbers, and that's what we're hoping for a few of these projects anyways. Uh, if that happens or not, we won't know until obviously the whole scenario plays out. The other thing for 2020 that the committee discussed and we really struggled with is that uh, a dollar amount request from the committee for the capital stabilization fund. 
And we approached this a few years ago, and the reason why we approached this a few years ago, in the last two years, we have been putting money away uh, into the capital stabilization fund from free cash. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, we put in 200,000. Last year, it was 250,000. As it stands right now, there's uh, a little over 450,000 with the interest. Uh, we are, as a committee, through much discussion, and a little, a little nervous about requesting it because you know money's very tight and it's going to have to fall on to the uh, finance committee in the select board. Uh, we are requesting another $250,000 this year for the capital stabilization fund. If, if funds are available, uh, we understand that by looking at budget, uh, things are going to be very tight this year, and we do understand that. Uh, as far as the capital stabilization fund, when that originally started, it was discussed about possibly doing a certain amount for four or five years and then limiting it at that point. So at least we would have a fund there. So if we get to a point where our revenues do no longer meet our expenses, which could happen with some of these numbers mm -hmm. very shortly, at least we would have a kitty there for capital projects so we wouldn't have to shut them out. So whether it be replacing a major piece of equipment or doing some type of upgrade to one of our town buildings, the money would be there. Instead of, sorry, there's no money, can't do it. And well, that's what's happened in the past and yes. it just hasn't seemed like a very functional plan. I have one quick question on that. There were, um, the highway department had hoped, and I think in their 20-year plan that they have, had hoped that, they, that the town would set aside a specific amount, you know, earmarked towards that for, to, for that plan. And I don't know if the capital plan, improvement planning committee looked at that at we all. Haven't, we haven't thought discussed about it. that. Uh, to be honest with you, a major well, there, was, all the there time. was some discussion, and we decided right. it, we didn't have enough right. information. It, at this time, it wasn't right. Because one thing you've got to be a little careful of, thanks, Ken. Yeah, I've got to run. One to thing that you have to be a little careful of with that is if you do it for one department, right. then all of a sudden, guess what? Yep. Every Several other asking. departments are going to say, well, you know, why can't we just, because if we have X amount in our stabilization fund, now, now you're creating stabilization funds for every department. Right. That's why myself, I would recommend to avoid and, that. And, 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 and if we had a bad the, the or a tight year, right. some things can be bumped. Right, and, exactly. And so and that's, well, we were that's really hesitant here. to commit. Well, right. that, I, I, I agree with that, but we, like, we know most of those asks are going to come based on their calendar. But that's why we're putting right. the um, stabilization but, fund. Right. I know, money yeah, money I'm glad we're putting it away. And I know you don't want to earmark it specifically. I just, you know, as long as you guys are right, have that in mind. Right, and we are. We're, we're aware yeah. of that. That's, yep. that's why if you yeah. take a look very quickly, just so we can finish up, because mm -hmm. I know there's another yep. uh, school committee meeting here. If you take a look at FY 20, 22, 23, and 24, if you just take a look at the bottom yep. totals there, 21, you're looking at $13.5 million. 22, you're looking at almost $6 million. Mm -hmm. 2023, you're looking at about a million. A light year at a million. As it stands, <laughs> right, a light year. And 2024, you're looking at $4 million. That's a lot of dollars. And that does not include all the projects. This is not a true reflection. Because right. we need to make decisions as far as the uh, senior center, mm -hmm. what we're going to do with that. Yep. And now it's not even We're here. going to need mm -hmm. to make a decision on the church, what we're going to do with that. Those, those two items themselves right. could Double increase that. these dollar amounts. And we can't let that go forever. We're going to have to decide yes or no. What are we going to do? 
because you're going to get to a point very quickly, especially with a senior center, there's going to be items there that are going to need repair. Because they already the do. Building they already do. is not in very good <laughs> shape. And, and you're, yeah. you're going to have to either commit a huge dollar amount to upgrade that building, or you're going to have to come up with an alternative plan. Yep. And those are things that we, as a committee, cannot anticipate. So we're just leaving those placeholders in there for now. If we had a pathway, believe me, we'd be can, right. identifying can, it. Can I say something on, yes, this, on, the, on the future four years, 2021 through 2024? This is not the capital uh, planning committee did not sit and say, okay, yes, it's okay to spend it. No, you can't spend it. Right. This is just what we think is going to be requested by department heads or might be needed. Yep. As, as an example, we have... We only eight, recommend the current year. Right. As right. an example, in 2021, we have $8 million for the library because we did not hear from the library. Everybody knows that they're looking at some point in time. They're on a list, a grant list, and they're going to be looking for money. And we're going to have to upfront, if people approve that, almost $8 million, a little less than $8 million. But you've got to anticipate, you've got to put it there, and we're going to have to front that money and then if and when the grant uh, works out, half of that approximately would be reimbursed. But it's still, it's still something that we as a committee have to anticipate that it's going to be there. Whether it's that exact year or not, we don't know. Well, we I'm should not sure know. If they know at the moment. No, they don't. Um, so. there, we'll have more information available um, when Greenfield decides whether they take the 10 million or not for their library because if they as a town choose not to do the library in Greenfield that frees up 10 million dollars of the bond that moves down the list so we get bumped up sooner so um, we'll know more information after April I think it's April 5th, uh, 1st or 15th or some 10th or something like that Sometime in April, they have to let the state know whether they're going to take it or not. Right. They got an extension. Right, where they're at, right. And then, then that will decide whether... Ripple effect on everybody right, else. It will ripple everybody else down the line. Because yeah. it's $10 million is quite a lot of money. But once again, I'd just like to thank all the committee members, I think, for the moving targets that we were dealing with. Well, thank you. Uh, I think they did an excellent job with this plan as far as getting numbers as realistically as they could. Are they exact? Probably not. But are they somewhat anticipated? I, I believe this committee has done a pretty good job with that. So. I'm, I'm very appreciative. And I also want to say thank you for understanding that some of these numbers are not solid, like the complete streets. or, mm -hmm. But it's, it's really important to list them, even if we don't have solid numbers, because that just bumps it up midstream, and then that's uh, it's an afterthought versus this is projected as part of it. Yeah. And so thank you. Yeah. Thanks thank a lot. You. Appreciate it. Have a good night. We will uh, be seeing you next Wednesday. Yes, we're going to have another meeting next Wednesday. Okay. So I, I think in order for us to yeah. be able to, to have the public hearing, mm -hmm. you, um, we things, have to have something available yeah, for inspection do beginning tomorrow, do so a copy of the plan. Yeah. So yeah, I, you're, I assume you yeah. accept this plan we as it's been presented to you. I make a motion we accept the plan second. as presented. I'll, I'll, I'll second that motion. Aye. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> so we'll put this on the website. Yeah, and We're still going to form anyway without him. Um, we don't need him. Letters to the legislative delegation. Have you yes. gotten that out yet? Yes. The draft so is to the, um, I sent it to um, uh, Nat, somebody in Natalie Blaise said call me in her yes, office. I called me about something else. So I sent that right. email to her. Um, um, and then in Joe Comerford's office. Those are the two. Yeah, but that's, those are state. Those are not federal. Just for the record, we did adjourn as a committee. And then the person that you gave. Me. John Nadelski. John Nadelski. You didn't, did you? Did I you sent you an email with John Nadelski's recommendation for each person's, person's. In e a contact person, so staff okay. person, their best staff person in each. The best staff person. Okay, right. And but Warren Markley's. Okay, right. Um, yeah, so I Richie have to get, 
in um, uh, everybody's office. Right, yeah, but I, ha I don't think you sent me the contact information, so I'm hunting down the contact information. I mean, you sent me the person's name, but no, you know, not the actual oh, way just, to get a hold of them. So I need well, to. Oh, anyways, just, if you have it's just their regional office. If you, yeah, if right. you get that letter draft, just let me yeah. know, and I'll come down and sign it. So okay. You can, you know, forward well, forward. no, no, it's a letter. It's a letter that they are sending. Like it's a draft letter that they put on their letterhead and give to us. No, it's no, a no. support We're letter. We're asking them to submit a size our right. We're asking them to provide support letters to the grant. So, so we have a draft letter that's been. I can give you a copy of the draft, send it to you, but it's for them to put in to the grant. Like in other words, we're asking them to give us yes, a support but letter. We're in line. Yes. And we need to politicize. The yes, but it's not for you. You're not signing the letter. They are. We are asking yes. them to give us the Kip, support letters. Yes, but Kip is asking them to support us. Yes, exactly. Yes. 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 That's what I thought. We were sending them a letter. Oh, I was just. Oh, the oh the staff people that I spoke to just sent. I could send. I could send them the letter, and they would put it on their letterhead and send it themselves. I'll just make sure we get copies of those letters. I just want to make sure it gets out because if it doesn't hit the political level, it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. No. That's absolutely. The line. Once I get all. All the letters from them, I'll I'll collect them all and and no, make no. sure that you have them, a copy okay. of them. No, they're going directly to USDA. Okay. But I'm just saying once I'll just. I am make getting sure. a damn ulcer on this. You've got <laughs> no. to make sure you've got to follow up. Yes. This is like the most important. Absolutely. This is the number one thing from our office. I will. I will follow up that and make okay. sure that we get copies okay. of those letters once they're done, so you can be confirmed. But those letter, but the, but they're supposed they're going to be sent directly to USDA. Right. So you already did send them. Out. Yes, yes, okay. the draft of Thank what you. they're supposed to send. Yes, yes. Okay. yes. <laughs> Before we go over to the school, um, did you want to take a couple quick minutes and, and uh, oh, we can finish up here real quick? The, the personnel board has uh, a, a draft job description for uh, a, an assistant in the inspections office. Do you want her yes. to post that as well? Well, yes. we don't have any money. We don't have any funding well, for that position. We, we do now because we have a lot of money left over because we haven't been paying a building inspector. Oh, sure I guess. Oh, that's a good point. I guess I'm not sure, but we don't, we haven't, you know, we didn't create the position yet. So, I mean, I know well, the personnel board the gave job. you a draft, but we don't, we haven't, you haven't voted on the position or created it. We can it. vote on it right now. So. I think, yeah, I think we should do it. And, yeah. And, and there was, I know you added, I saw in the budget there was $22,000 added to that anyways. And, and I uh, put it, or I looked at it, and it's only a 19-hour part-time. But we haven't spent any money anyway. Right, but it's only 19 hours, so we don't have to pay benefits. Mm -hmm. anymore. All right. And we definitely did. So let's, let's, can we finish this up then? Sure. Okay. The other the other thing you guys have on the on the agenda is an executive session to do that. So yeah. did you want to just say you're going to go into an executive session after and then not return? No, to I'm going to go home. I'm going to go home. Do you, well, do you want we need to do this executive session for the police? I think so. Are you okay with it? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go home. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to at this point. We'll see. I'm not sure. I think they're still no. meeting, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, we can look at it right now. Let's look at it right now. Take yeah. two minutes. It's okay. in your It's in your packet. I gave it to her. Yeah. Let's let's look at it, and I'm fine with it. Um, to have it posted, because otherwise it's going to take a while to get there. We don't do it. You know what I mean? I have no. I have not looked at. I don't know what Priscilla's job description is. So I'm not sure. No, is it the same it, this is. It, it, it's Maybe. no. It's just a clerical assistant. Right. You know. To who though? To who? To, to the uh, inspections to department. Okay, but what does Priscilla do right now? She worked for them too. I yes. thought she was working. For them. She does. Okay, so is it? This, that's what I'm asking. Are we just creating the same? Is it this pretty much stuff? the same thing. Okay, but not for the same department because we already have that. We need somebody for planning, zoning, concom. No, that's what the, we're supposed to be. That's doing. the assistant. That's you're going to have uh, right. an assistant town right, administrator we, that's going to be doing that. Right, but not on the administrative level. I mean, not not at the clerical support level because because the, the inspections department needs permits and all of that stuff done. Right. So we're going to have all. All of that covered zoning, concom, land use, and inspections, you're saying, between those two clerical staff positions? Yes. Okay, and no yeah. Board of Health, no Board of Health in that? Well, the person, it, 
that's why I put to the inspections department. It, it doesn't have to be, it can be for the Board of Health too. But there's all not enough time thing. for that though. That's my concern because right now it's not in that Well, it's getting job. done by one person at no, 19 hours. No, it's not. Hours. It's getting done by Pat right now in the Board of Health. Okay. The Board of so Health stuff's getting done by, by Pat. By adding another part-time person, that will relieve Pat of some of the burden that's on her. Well, we don't have anybody right now doing the land use and all of that work. So, so that work not all, also needs to be addressed. The Board of Health, some of the Board of Health work, yep. and then the inspections department I, I, as well. I fail to see what, what the issue is if we, if we just get another part-time person. Whatever work needs to get done, they can do it. Yeah, we can yeah. move some of it over. I just right. wanted to be clear because I don't, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to have two half-time people doing the same job when we have so much you know, work to be done. Well, we so I want to make sure the that it's is, not is it divested between two people. There's more work there that one than one part-time person can do. So by having a second part-time person, first of all, the new person could learn from the person that's already there, and they could we could schedule so they work different hours so there's somebody there all the time. Yeah, but the point about, I agree about having somebody there all the time, but I, I think right now the work that we need to get done isn't, I don't think is fully getting done in that one place. So I, I guess I don't really care. I guess I'm just a little, I don't want to just create, I don't think what we have is effective. So just to create a second thing of what we have, I, I'm concerned about the effectiveness of it. The, the whole idea was to have one, you know, to have a coordinated land use planning you know, situations. Well, so that's not going to fly that because we, can, yeah. that's not going to fly so that the town, the assistant town administrator can do some of that. Yeah, absolutely. And stuff like I that. agree. So we still need to get that out too. I agree. But above and beyond that, we need more help in the inspections department. Uh, well, no. Right now, what we need is more help in the in the land use section. So I guess, in a sense, it's the same department. But but I. All right. But, but we I need just, we need two people. As soon as we, we the, know, the, as soon the, as the long as it's clear that right. it's right. But a full time. <laughs> am I correct? A full time. Yes. Town yes. administrator, uh, full time assistant that's assistant going to do some land use and planning, and a part time person to help Priscilla in the inspections office. To okay. help, well, right, to work well, on whatever, land and use it's stuff. not specific. It's any right. any stuff in there, and that's why. And this is a gateway to sorting out right. what we really need in the department exactly. because we're not going to get what we requested right. originally. So yeah. this is what that's this right. is a sort of a stopgap measure. Right. And, and, and it's a transitioning position. Okay. So do you want to make a motion to? I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. Um, the motion is to hire a... To a, post that as to, well. to post this job for a clerical assistant to the inspections department. Right. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we need to do one quick thing. Um, on your, in your town rep uh, administrator's report, we just, there was a request to... Um, open a, a donations account for the 350th birthday? Yes. Yep. So could okay. we just vote that? Sure. Uh, I, okay. I make a motion to open as a, uh, a, donation, a, account. Don a donation account for our 350th um, anniversary. And I will second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, okay, that part two. of that is um, we're looking, probably looking at a budget of about 100000 It seems like um, well, Hadley had a budget of 300,000. Sunderland's was about 100, and, and Conway's was about 90. And so we're just sort of ballparking 100. What was their big expense with doing the that? Parade, the parade is the biggest thing. The expense. They that hire was, people to come for it? Yeah, okay. this, and, it, and you have to do all kinds of extra stuff um, from a safety point of view. So it's about $50,000 is hmm. for a parade. And then, um, but the donations, the reason why the donation count is because you fundraise between now and when you have your event, which is in 2023, but also you, um, you know, anticipate what um, your expenses are can, and you can I know, get I know people in, signed up for it. I know in the, in the mid-80s, we had some pretty big Fourth of July parades here. You know, I, I have videotapes I'm still in. I, I don't. I find it hard to believe the town would have spent that kind of money back then, but maybe. Okay. Um, yeah. So some of these things are pretty. But you have like the um, like Hadley, they spent like three hundred thousand, but they got like three donations of twenty five thousand from nice. banks and stuff. And I so see. the idea is you you solicit and fundraise yep. to offset. Okay. Um, 
Did, did we end up end up posting that uh, building inspector's position again? Uh, it, I have not done it okay. yet, no. But I will do it tomorrow. I'll do all three of them at the same time. Okay, great, great. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> did we ever get the final? We, we, I don't think we get the final job description for the town administrator. We, we spoke about that early. Are you all set with that? I, I think mean, so. I think you this well, one, right? I don't. I, no, I guess the, I don't. I'm sure I have the yeah. actual version okay. now that you just voted. So we is talked somebody going to make yeah. okay, All right. We, we, we've got some changes or? here. All right. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll so on through. the agenda, Diana, on the agenda, I think, on Elizabeth. the agenda for next week, yep. um, can you put on the assistant town administrator? Well, that was on tonight's agenda. That's on tonight's. So you voted earlier tonight to go ahead and post that. So I was going to post that, post the clerical, and post the. I thought you were posting the town administrator. I'm not. No, involved not the in town that. administrator. I'm not involved in that. We d we're, tonight we're you voted close. the assistant. We're you voted the clerical, and you voted, and you already. That's voted the town administrator. So right, but voted. this is the one that we just changed. You approved oh, that. We approved yes. it. You approved the posting, but, but I'm not responsible changed. for that. Right, but, right, but for next week, yes. can we put on the assistant? We. We, we just, just voted the, that tonight. We just voted this. You already voted tonight. to put that out today. The assistant and the, We're not changing yes. that job at all. But how, but that was going to be have land use in part, part it of it. It already does. It okay. already it does. does. You have yeah, enough? it's the okay. same as it was yeah. before. It still had the plan use stuff in it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, the the one that we had presented before. Yes. We yeah. okay. basically Connor voted them all, but we just yeah. got to get this to change it. All right. Uh, we'll I just want to make sure that we're moving ahead with all this stuff. Get it done. Yep. Okay. I have section D, the last. Yep. I'll, if you come here, I'll show you what we changed. Oh. Did you uh, get feedback from yes. the chair? Yes. Oh. Yes. Yep. We're basically just going to strike this sentence or this part as provided the by the bylaw. Because we're, we're not just, even sure if there is a bylaw thing. Okay. We're going to strike that. And yep. then here we're going to get rid of as directed by and just to the select board and finance committee. Okay. And in here, after selectmen, we're going to, and I think we're going to change that to select board. Correct. Uh, add and finance committee. committee as requested. Okay. Yeah, I think that goes with this. Okay. Okay. Does that, thank you so that, much. That was for, the only correction yep, we yep, had. Yes. Yeah, thank yes. you for doing oh, that. Oh, my gosh, you're very welcome. So that's done. Thank okay. you. Awesome. Okay. And you'll okay. take care of that wherever it's supposed so to go. So give that to Diane. Oh. I don't know. Well, I guess that's the question. Then do you oh, want. So who is doing it? Yeah. Who's I, posting it? Yeah, who does it go to after that? So I can Well, if it's sure. not going to Diana, somebody has to take responsibility for it. Who is uh, doing it? I don't know. Well, See, I, this, we don't have no way to do this stuff. I guess we I could think, ask. I think, I think uh, Trevor had been taking Oh, we'll talk right. to Trevor. I mean, I'd be okay. happy to do it. Oh, you know something? Now that you say that, I think Trevor, um, when he was at our personnel board meeting, I think he did chime up and say that he would do that. I, I think oh, if oh, memory okay. serves me so right. So he was going to physically make sure Satu or whoever's Whoever. doing it yeah. gets okay. it, okay. right? That we'll, would be we'll great. verify with him. Please I'll do. Take, I'll and take I, I can help in any okay. way. Yeah. All right. We just Good. need to physically make sure <laughs> he gets it. Let me just see. Uh, okay. Let me just see. I think. All right. Was there anything so, else that we needed to well, discuss? Well, we definitely have to nope. talk about the exec session because we have a meeting on Friday. Yeah. So I guess unless you, you just, just, just. I mean, we have to. We can't speak of it publicly, we're going but Friday. If we, uh, Unless we postpone that meeting, and because we're meeting again next you, week. Do you want to go into executive session and go home? Okay. All right. Um, so we're all set. So I, I don't know the language. So well, no. we were gonna. I guess the idea was you were gonna go to the to the um, we are to the school on the way out. Okay. Yeah. So we are gonna go into an executive so, session now, yeah. not go back into. Right. We'll go into executive and session. And then we're gonna adjourn. All right. Okay. We're meeting next week anyway, so Correct. it doesn't. Okay. So we're going to into executive session. We're meeting session at 6 p.m. next week, so people knew that we are contract. Okay. Negotiations for yeah. union. Yeah, it's on your thing. In person. Okay. Yeah, we got it. So we'll and do we'll that. Call vote. We'll move into that now. So I, Henry Camosa. I, Carolyn Ness. All right, good. So we'll go into that. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank well, you very much. Thank you.